Hey, yo, what's up? You know, this is the one and the only Pastor L live in the, live in the, where, where we live from? The synagogue. That's right, the synagogue. You know it is. You know it is. You know what we do. Get y'all asses up here in this church. Come on all my she come on my children come on sit down i got to deliver you from these elves and show you how these elves deliver because we got something special when they're serving today the come on there drop that money in the building fund because we's about to get busy so come on last call hey are you got that over there fam all right all right come on in come on in you can shut the doors shut the doors if you're late we gonna bring you in through the back but yo, the one and the only passed there live in the synagogue got another installment of Triple the God Speak Song. Some Uchu Sentai Key Ranger Space number 26. I will hold the episode name to myself because it's what's this episode about. And if I told you what it was, then it would kind of spoil it. But if you're watching the review, but you've already watched it. But this is for the people who just come in and tune in just for the hilarity and the comedy and stuff. So this is for you. You want to know something interesting before we get started? I do not remember, like, given, like, this episode and how it played out, like, how something that small could balloon into what we get. And it's just going from one episode to the other. Usually, when Sentai does what this episode does, usually it's something that comes up on the side in one episode and then randomly, just for the sake of the plot, when we need something to do, they bring it back up in this big giant way. No. Because this has because the problem that this episode end up causing for our heroes and for the plot for something to solve is this has been a running thread throughout this whole series. And given, like I said, and I should probably be talking about this towards the end of it, but just to give you guys some analysis before we get started about how this show has done what it's done and how it's done that, is that it kind of makes sense that you would have this for this reason, for the other reasons that we'll explain at the end of the episode of why things are the way they are, if that made any sense to you. You might be wondering, however, the problem we're talking about. We are talking about one Nagare because in our previous installment, space number 25, is that the Q Rangers was on somewhere on our earth and they was turning keys. And when you went to go turn your key, you saw something that was a reflection of whatever, depending on what it was. And there were some funny things, some serious some things, a little bit of everything. Naga went to his key and there was no one there. And ever since then, Naga has been like legit shook in his head about what this really means for him. And that it's like because to him, he looked inside himself. And like a lot of this is at the beginning of the episode, too, of how you feel that after 26 episodes of this Sentai, you've made zero strides forward until your ultimate goal to truly get feelings because of how things are with you at this moment. You know what I'm saying? It's like his legit shook is felt at the beginning of this episode. Because we begin our episode, we having a Zord battle. Because you know when an episode starts with a Zord battle, things gonna get crazy. So they in a Zord battle, they up and you die my gene and they sitting up here trying to put in work, but now they're not moving because he shook about ain't nobody see me at the keys, cuz me me at the keys does so I won't be lonely. So he sitting up here, the leg won't move, and you got bird man, what my name is sitting up here like, yo, why the leg ain't moving, fam? What's going on out there? And then and then lucky like yo. Yo, Naga, my, my Naga, my Naga, get it together, my Naga, do what you do, put in work, and then he start going crazy, and then the leg not working, and they like, yo, man, this, yo, Naga, go sit down somewhere, dog, we gonna split up, and we gonna do something, and then they bust out into three separate resorts, you got q red Ruteo, Giganto, oh, and then they sit up here and put in the work, leaving Naga to sit down there to stew in it, like, I'm a failure, man, I can't put in no work, I'm sad, because I'm Naga, and have no emotions, and this has no regulation on the plot whatsoever, okay, so, there was that. So they, so, they win the day, hit they self, triple meteor break, and all of that, and they win. 
The show uses this time to introduce Akiyama, who we've who we've previously met and heard about in previous episodes and things like that. Of she see Naga down there and she recognizes what's going on and she's like, I got this. Like she sits up here like I got this. She, she I'm like, there was more to her than 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 spiky nipples. I will tell you that because. She got a fish coming out of snatch, and it's just like, yes, I I highly agree with this kid show. I do, I really really do. Like I sit up here and remember when, when Katy Perry showed a little cleavage to elbow, and, and Mama's got jealous. Like my titties ain't that big. I'm sad as fuck. Oh, but yeah, but we'll get more into Akiyama and her her plans later because this is a big major part of this episode. So, like I said, like, right now, where we stand is, Naga is legit shook, and Nakayamba is going to use this to further her master plan because she see that the dude with no emotion trying to get emotion is a legit shook. This should be very interesting. Oh, 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 I'm sorry, wait a minute, I gotta do this for you. Oh, Kuranja! Something about a movie we won't see until somebody subs it. Back to our episode. So, we back on my uncle. And Birdman, like, what my name is, Birdman. Like, yo, um, we need to discuss this plan. And what plan you talking about, fool? I'm like, yo, man, we finna go, we finna make Black to the Future Fire. Like, man, I got this camera and everything, man. I done sat up here, I done, I done hired all these extras. I got mad bitches for the video. What are we gonna do about Black to the Future Fire? And no one is paying Birdman no attention while he's sitting up here trying to shoot his music video about going black in time. Do 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 Negro back in time. I'm just sitting up here like, huh? I'm sitting up here. I'm kind of mad for you, Birdman, because you trying to make this high movie with the bitches and the Astros and this and that and weed and crying all this. And nobody listening to you because everybody like, Naga, what happened down there, cuzzo? Man, I don't feel nothing, man. Man, I'm shook, man. I don't feel nothing. I'm like, man, y'all met me. I ain't feel nothing, but I've been smiling a little bit. I even cried once, man. I'm like, man, I pretend to be a slave to get some emotions, man. Y'all remember that? We was on that island over there with that little girl they was gonna kill, and I pretended to be a slave to get some emotions, man. But then I went to my key, man, and wasn't nobody there, man. I'm sad, man. I'm sad, man. Please. Just leave me alone, man. Just leave me alone. Shinron Perp follows this up with, from an analysis standpoint, the most important thing that is said this episode that nobody picks up on. Do you see how you getting mad about having no emotions? That's an emotion, dude. That right there, my dude, my naga, is an emotion. It may not be the emotion that you are looking for. But if you can feel something because something you feel ain't right, that's growth. Take that. Hold on to it. Nurture it. Don't let it become twisted and jacked and messed up. You improving, my dude. Keep it up, man. You know what I'm saying? And then and then balance being his best friend. Like, yo, my naga, you been at this for a minute, cuz. Like, wrong wasn't built in a day. You know all of you from Miss Blah Blah. You doing a wonderful job, man. I'm proud of you. Cause you my naga. You my naga. And I'm proud of you. I'm so I'm so I'm so proud of you for sitting up here getting these emotions, man. Come here. Give me some love. Yeah, let's do the secret handshake. Do the thing. Do the pose. Do the fingers. Do the fingers. My naga. What up? Excuse me. What my name is? Birdman. Now, while y'all sitting up here talking about this dude who's sitting up here ain't feeling nothing, what's the plan to shoot my magic and music, my magic music video for Black to the Future 5? Excuse me, balance. What is the update on the freaks that's supposed to be in my traveling back in time music video, sir? Hey, we on schedule to make the music video, fam. Calm down, my dude. Like, I got this. Like, yo, I just got off the phone with my dude. Like, yo, my dude is a beast. My dude is a straight oh, monster. Trust me. I got this. Just let me do my thing. You know what I'm saying? Just let me do my thing. All right. All right. 
I need y'all to listen, man. I'm I'm remember, I'm a living legend. What my name is, Birdman. Y'all know what it is, Oto We Sarugi, the greatest of all time. Y'all remember that, right? Yo. So I need y'all to chill. Stop focusing on people who playing around. Cause you like cause you playing with you playing with my Black to the Future video. You playing with my emotions. <laughs> Got your ass. Look, here the plan is. We have to figure out when we go black to the future about what's good before we get there. Because when we get there, we're not going to go run up on, on Don Omage, dog. We're not going to run up on Drop Man of the Niggers. We're not going to do this. We are not going to do this. We got to do this with some tact and some tactics. You know what I mean? So we just can't roll back in time with the dumpers sitting up here laying waste of foods, using superpowers. No, 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 no. We got to do this like we got some sense. So, I got the plan, but I just need to just think about it just a little bit more. Just a little bit more. So, I'm going to need a little more time with my action figures to think of a plan, but we're going to shoot the music video. We're going to go back in time. We're going to kill down all my and drop right the niggas, and we're going to put it into work. So, find something to do while I do that. So, y'all find something to do while I handle this business, and y'all do that. Sharon Perk come in like, hey, you know what, bro, man? It ain't such a bad idea, my dude. Hey, hey, look. As your commander, I'm giving y'all a vacation. Like, go down to the earth and just chill. Y'all ain't got to move no lean today. You ain't got to fight no bad guys today. While we get the rest of the Black to the Future gang together, just sit back, chill, do something. What y'all want to do? Hand me like, let's have a barbecue. And I'm like, a barbecue? A barbecue? They're like, yo. Like, yo, we going we gonna to have a barbecue, my fool. We going to do this. We going to do this, son, DJ. Y'all like, already. He like, yo, we going to put in this work. You know, I'm the greatest of all time. All I do is cook this work up. All I do is slice, 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 slash, slash, slash. And then whip, 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 whip. And it be like, boom. And it be like. Uh, like having an on your mouth, you know what I mean? So I got you. So put on your Q Ranger best. Meet me down on the earth, and I'm gonna whip up this work. I'm gonna whip, 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 whip up this work. So y'all get ready, man. I'll meet y'all down on the earth, man. I'm finna get down there right now. I'm gonna start cooking. I don't need to change. I'm already looking fly. Cause I'm Sanji J R. You know what it is. So let's go on and do this. So we done here on the earth. And now he and now Sandy sitting up reading cook to work. Everybody like, yo, eat the doctor mass. And they like, yo, we finna grub. Like Sandy, like, yo, my naga, you good, Sam? He like, I'm still shook, man. <laughs> my Moses and my dick don't work. I'm so sad that, that nobody can see me. And then I messed up doing the magazine fight. Nobody love me, man. I'm sorry, 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 i am you just need to just calm down. Like, you know, when you ain't crying, you you a little cute. But you got to stop relying on balance so much. I'm like, I know that's your fam and all that. But at the end of the day, you got to do you, my naga. You got to do you. Do what's best for you. And, and we as your fam, we always going to have your back. We going to respect you. We going to roll with you. Because you part of the Q Ranger gang. So you know I always got love for you and maybe. If you a good boy, I'll let you show me why they call me Cutie Hanny. Wink, 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 wink. While, while Hammy sitting up here trying to get Naga to, you know, put the work in, Akiyama shows up and she sits up here. She like, yo, she announced herself in there, bust a pole like Michael Jackson. She does a Trump. She she grabs all of us. She's like, what my name is? Akiyama. And grab my over there. And I'm just like, get you Mm, get you up. Spiky nipples, fetch for a crotch, grabs it. And I'm just like, good on you, Japanese kid show. Good on you. So after 
Akiyama shows up. Birdman and another Birdman news of the day. I remember her, but she don't look like that. Another one of those clues that everything is not what it seems. And then she sits up here and she's like, yo, I want to play a game. You know what game this is? It's called Riot. What you going to do, you going to close your eyes and pretend it's New Ferguson. And you going to sit up here and you going to be New Fergusonite. So, she sits up here and slaps her having, she slaps her on her staff into the ground. And they get absorbed by this purple stuff and they start acting on food. Like, they sitting up here on all this, they sitting up here. This probably the true rainbow lean because they sitting up for everybody. This hit everybody different. You got some people fighting, people up there crying, hitting backflips. It's like everybody just all over the damn place. She sitting up for like, show me the emotions. And I'm like, what do this alien know about Jerry Maguire? And you just sit up here and I'm just like, yeah, J- Japanese children's show. And I'm just like, yo, yeah. And our actual story though. Mr. L, like, um, y'all see this, right? Now, I know y'all want to eat this food, fam, but, you know, we got to handle this business because, you know, when we get off vacation, we got to sell work to these fools, so these fools got to at least be alive for us to sell work. So, here the plan is. I'm going to lead the squad. I got my crew. The rest of y'all, y'all going to say they humans, and we going to do this. While this is happening, they zoom over to Naga, and Naga's like, emotions. And I'm like, yeah, this means nothing. This means nothing at all. This is not foreboding to what's going to be the climax of this episode. Believe me, nothing bad is going to happen because some some bad guy sitting up here promising a good guy something that they can never deliver on, but everything's going to be okay. So the squad roll out, go do the work, and, uh, and the rest of the squad go sit up here and say to people, and then they catch a massive L from Akiyana. Like, Akiyama delivers this L. Well, she kind of has to because it's her first official appearance and you can't make the character look weak because, you know, because we got to get over that we might make a toy of her and maybe a ranger key or something. We got to at least make you think you want to buy it for your children or for yourself if you collect those things. So we got to get we got to get this over because, you know, in a couple of episodes, we going to put in some real work and she's going to be eliminated off the face of the planet. So what does this really honestly matters? I'm just sitting up here like, come on. I've been reviewing this episode. I've been reviewing this show for 26 episodes. I've been watching Sentai for a decade. Like, for real. For a decade watching Sentai. Like, been watching Power Rangers since 93. Like, I really don't know how this is really going to end. Come on, now. Don't don't be no fool. You know what I mean? I ain't going to sit up here and be no fool like that. But y'all know what I'm talking about, though. Anyway. Anyway. After they sit up here and take all these massive L's, you got... You got my Naga in the corner. And Nakayamba walk up her and she busts it wide open for this boy. He like, what is this? I don't what feeling is this? She like, it's called the heartbeat. I'm going to show you what it is. I'm going to show you the wet wet. I'm going to bust it open for you, boy. And you ain't going to never resist. She sits up her and gives this boy a show. She busts it wide open on the pole. Son. Head down, head down, head down, head down, head down, head down. Sits up her, busts it wide open. For Curania. Happy to die, Silva. Now they know why they call me the snake one, boy. Because she sits up her and she legitimately busts it wide open. She busts it wide open for this boy. This boy like, I like this emotion. Yeah, this emotion feel real. Because she sits up her like, yeah, you like this boy? I I'm going to be back soon and I'm going to give you the full course meal. Note to self, play no more heroes. But yeah, after um after Akiyama sits up her bust it wide open for Naga, she sits up her like, well, I didn't deliver enough L for y'all. I done planted the seed for my master plan to work, but I'll be back later for y'all to take some L. So until then, you guys have fun and she disappeared. We go right into the next scene with her. And she sit up her and talk to her two homies. She sit up her like, you know we could have whooped their ass, right? But we retreated. Do y'all want to know why? They sitting up here looking around like, 
We ain't got no miles. We can't really talk. We don't really care. And we ain't got no choice but to actually listen to you. But yeah, we care exactly what you say. The reason why I busted wide open for him. Because I know he ain't ever had no wet like this. Once he get a taste of what I can really do. He going to be mine forever. And he going to do whatever I want in exchange for the wet. Because that's how it work. Y'all want some of this? They sit up here looking confused like, what is that? We don't know what to do with no fish head. We don't know what to do with this. They just sit up here looking at each other like, alright, what is that? And I don't know what you're asking me for. Nah, because I'm asking you, kid. Like, nah, man. I don't want nothing to do with that, dog. If it's a head down there at the bottom, dog, I don't think you want nothing to do with that, family. I swear to God on my mama. On Dark Matter, nigga, squadron. On my hood. No, no, no. I don't think so. Mm-mm. We not going to do that. M- maybe later. And she's like, okay. I- 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 I'll keep it ready for my Nagabu. But if y'all change our mind, I'm going to be in the other room getting it ready. I'll bust it open for you too and you ain't going to never resist. And she leaves. So, they sit up here. And they all split up because Naga runs away after getting it busted wide open because his conflicted feeling like, he like, man, I know how lucky feel, dog, when they be throwing it at him, dog. I'm like, yo, this is news. So he's sitting up there, like, and conflict with his emotion. And what happens next, just so I can, like, condense this part for the sake of analysis and review, is we go back and forth. And what we learn from this is that, first of all, we got Hammy trying to calm down, God trying to calm Naga down, but... She sits up her and accidentally makes it worse by repeating what she told him earlier. By giving him the whole speech of, you should do what you feel. And that we roll with you and we got your back. And this sits up her and compounds the problem. On the other side, we got, we do, we doing that Sentai thing where two people are telling a similar story, but you're supposed to get that it's the same story being told, and it's about Naga's people, about how we learned at the beginning of the series that the reason why they locked their emotions away was because they were some violent psychopaths, jack-jack psychomaniacs, sitting up here slashing each other, killing each other. We got World War, like, man, it was a World War last week. It's another one now. Like, they, they, we, ain't talking about, we ain't talking about small-scale New Ferguson riding on. We having World Wars every week. Like, we sit up here, wipe out each other, then we just regurgitate and just do it again. I'm just like, what? Man, y'all crazy as hell. I'm like, I can't deal with this, man. Like, for, for real, though. But they do this little Sentai thing of, we need you, we need a group of people in two separate places to understand the same story at the same time. So we just going to bounce back and forth. You know what I'm saying? So I'm understanding, like, why this is happening. It's happening, it's like, because from an analysis standpoint, this is something that the show has already explained and reinforced multiple times when it had to. So, I don't know whether they think the children of this show can't remember something past the last toy that they put in their face, or for us, the fans who watch this show as a show that is supposed to be a story that's supposed to have ups and downs and drama and happiness and sadness, of do we really need a reminder about why Naga doesn't feel anything? But this is a character episode for him, so, you know, taking a second to understand the reason, and it's raised, and it's raised on down to air for why the character exists and what this character motivation is makes sense. And also during all of that, Hammy tried to throw it at Naga, and Naga don't know what to do because he addicted to other stuff. So I just wanted to just put that out there and let you know. And he sits up her at the end of this, and he's snapping her. He's like, "I want to listen to put, I want to freaking the help it tonight." Like, is it too soon for Lincoln Park jokes? Like, for real. Like, I'm asking legitimate questions. Like, is it too soon? Because it's like, you, I'm like, even if that didn't happen, I probably would have still made this joke no matter what. You know what I'm saying? I'd have been like, yo, go watch you with AMV from like 2006. Maybe I should have said that instead of invoking Lincoln Park, maybe. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? It's like, so he sits up here, he rages out of control. Like, I'm finna go break the habit. Tonight, 
Send a burning crying in my skin. The wounds, they will not heal in the end. You know what Naga did in the end? Santa predict that hot thing that I think gonna have me exploder and said I'm finna go get what I want. My destined wet wet, I'm out and he leaves. Hammy called a squad like yo, yo Naka finna do something crazy, fam. He finna go to that girl with the with the fish unders and, and they said they're like, hey, we need to split up for like the fourth time this episode. Come on, that's not how many times they actually split up, but come on, for comedy sake. So we gotta split up again. Because we ain't got nothing else better to do. And do honesty, we don't. So they splits up again. We got a squad over here to go sit up here and deal with this. And the other thing they finna go deal with. Because Sharon Park called him like, hey, I got some news for y'all. Um, Remember them people that were sitting up here acting stupid? They they around in the streets clowning. So I'm not only going to need y'all to go get knocked before you go do something stupid. But I also need y'all to handle these people that sitting up here thinking it's new fun. Ferguson all over the place. It was New Ferguson and it was cool when they was in this park or whatever. But, you know, they in the world now and they sitting up here destroying where I sell my lean. So, y'all need to go handle that. So, squad split up. So, let me see. Where are we? You know what I'm saying? Oh, okay. So, you know what I'm saying? Okay, I'm trying to think. Where, what happened? Oh, Another important part of this episode happened before we get to the transition towards like the 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 point of this episode. During this whole sequence where they splitting up and doing all this, Shinron Perp on purpose sits up her and doesn't tell Balance what's going on with Naga that he's run away. He just sits up her and just like completely changes the subject when he walked back in the room. Hey yo, fam. Hey yo, you done with that thing, my fool? Like, oh yeah, I got that, fam. Don't worry about it, cuz man. We gonna sit up here. We gonna be moving black in time. Do, 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 do. In a minute, so don't worry about it. So, this is another little moment because, you know what? No, I'm gonna hold that. Because there is a point in this episode where I think it's better for me to insert that and make sense of it for plot reason and purposes. So, I have to remember that whole little thought string and get to it. So, we got the squadron split up. We got some people. We, we got we got one squad that's sitting up here going to go put us in work to go stop all the people from turning Earth into New Ferguson everywhere. And we got another squad that's finna go after Naga to make sure he don't do something stupid. So, we need to join our quest in progress of, you know, people doing their work. And we sit up here, you know what I'm saying, and it's like... We we in a barber shop, and we got Japanese Justin and Wolf Wolf in the barber shop, and this dude sitting up here on the on the chair like, yo man, how you fuck my fade, huh? Like this is not Facebook. I did not sit up here and say, yo, I want one of these, and I want you to cut my hair out crazy. All I needed you to do was give me a little lining, and I need you to get, and I need to get, I need to get my box fade, man. I'm trying to look like me. I'm trying to look like I am, like I'm back out the 1990s though. Like I ain't got the big old thing like Kitty Play, but yo, I'm trying to get my box fade fitted. And they riding, they riding in the barbershop. Like, come on, that's not even barbershop etiquette. You ain't supposed to start a fight where you get your hair cut. That's where you sit up here and you shoot the breeze with your people. You make sure to always tip your barber. You always tip your barber. Me, when I used to go to the barbershop, I always tip my barber to the nearest $5. Or depending on how cool I was with my barber. Like, I used to get my hair cut full shade, everything 15. I used to get my barber 20. To give my barber 20, keep it. You know what I'm saying? Like, yo, because my cause when I was going to the barber shop on the regular, yo, my, my dude had me faded. I want to shout out to a very special person. My boy, Birdman, who actually Birdman is actually named after because his name wasn't Birdman, but this dude was the dude who cooked the chicken at the corner store. He cut my hair, yo. The dude was a beast, man. So shout out to my boy Corey Dog. I don't know if you ever gonna hear this, but man, yo, always. I'm like, yo. Some some happened uh, some happened back in the day where where my Birdman wasn't available. I walked around for a good month looking crazy, like my, like my, like like yo the boss was like, why you ain't cut your hair? Yo, it's free Birdman. It's free Birdman. I ain't cut my hair to Birdman free. Cause seriously, I have a like for real. We gonna have this discussion just on some real stuff. I have a thing about my hair. Like I cut my hair now, but back in the day. When I found the bar, when I, when I finally got with him, and he was a barber that I trusted, I didn't want nobody else in my hair. 
I would cut. I'm like, I never had a situation where I had an extreme emergency where I had to get my hair cut. But then the last dude that cut my hair, shout out to my boy Orlando. He used to always take care of me when I used to live on the north. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, Jay and Von go to him still to go get that hair cut. And I wish I could go myself, but I, 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 ain't got, I ain't got to make the trek to the north side. But I just figured, man, a little, a little history about your boy, you know, about barbershop and all that. So remember, tip your barber. Be loyal to your barber because your lawyer barber, if you loyal to your barber, your barber going to always take care of you. Cause you build you man, I'm like I'm like I had a, I'm like I had a boy, I built up enough faith. I was getting I was air nine and he walk in like yo keep your money dog free haircut on me dog. Just cause just cause I'm catching them on a good day. So treat your barbers good and they'll treat you good in return. Oh oh that Q Ranger problem that before I got off on this tangent. Oh um Japanese Justin saw that with a Q timer that sat up here and gave everybody hair and Wolf who had a mohawk. So I don't know if he actually gonna keep it. He doesn't spoiler alert. But I just want to figure I'd let you know that information. You know what I'm saying? Um, meanwhile, we have my, my lovingly wife who cheated on me last episode, and we have to go to marriage counseling for that now. But she sits up here, and she on the bridge, and and, and they on the bridge, and there's some people on the bridge, spinning on the bridge. That is the Streets of Rage 2 reference. And I have to say that it's the Streets of Rage 2 reference, because am I really going to think you guys are going to understand it's the Streets of Rage 2 reference? Come on, let's be for real. But anyway, these people on the bridge, and cutie, and, um, and my bae wrapped their bae, it's like, how do I solve this problem? Little, little for my little pony Q time. And they sit up her, range out, range out, Q Q range to do the Q range to dance, and they sit up her and fall out like, like, see, I just had this thought. They need to make a Q range to beat them up, but toward the end of the season, because I would love nothing more than to have a beat them up where you have special Q timers that do stuff and it's like green clearing attacks. That'd be nuts. That would be nuts. I'm like, I just had that random thought. I just had that random thought, like a real, a real decent Q Ranger beat them up, where you can load up certain Q timers and they have like special attacks and stuff. That would be dope. Put that on my to do list, internet. Do that. Oh, it wouldn't be a ride if they wasn't fighting in the club. So guess who they send to go break up the, the club fight? Moo Moo Man, straight from the Moo Moo form from Legend of Zelda to go break up this fight. Like, Moo Moo Man standing outside the club and they riding and he just sitting up here like, what do I do? He sits up here like, he trying to figure out like, yo, if I go in here, I'm a DDT a fool. You know what I'm saying? I'm a DDT a fool. I'm going to hit one of these fools to torture rack. You know how I get down. He like, whatever. And he's still talking about put him nap, nap, sleep. <laughs> We seem like the most logical way to solve that problem, given that, you know, for real, if Moo Moo Man would have went in there and put in some work, it would have got ugly. It would have got ugly. But, yeah, that solves all our problem of our, of our New Ferguson riders being New Ferguson Knights in New Ferguson. Now, <laughs> this is the part of the episode... Your boy's been waiting for. I've been waiting for this part. I'm like, after I get done, it is so much that I want to talk about and refer to all this. But let's get through it first. And then we can and we can go dumb and we can talk about it a little bit. Cause I, I got a lot to say about this. We catch up, we catch up with my Naga. He's sitting up here in the forest. He's sitting up here calling out. Hey, hey, girl who sat up here and busted wide open and put it on me like nobody else. Where you at, girl? Where you at, baby? Hey there, lover. You want to get acquainted? She sat up here and she put in this work. She sat up here, sat up her hit a thing in the, in the ground. Now I can start seeing versions of himself. He sat up here, absorbed him, sitting up here like, ugh. She sat up here like, you want some more of this wet daddy? Yeah, girl. Whatever you want to do, do it. She sat up her and bust this dude insane nut. No, I'm sat up her and gave him the greatest happy ending in the history of happy endings. The happy ending was so crazy, they had to zoom out for the explosion to show there was an explosion. And I was like, word? So... She did what she said she was going to do. She gave Naga some wet wet. He got addicted to the wet wet. Which is a shame because you should never let she run your life. 
And then things get interesting. The squad show up not soon after. <laughs> Man, I just lost my head. Lost my thoughts for like two seconds. Well, okay, let me write it back. Not soon after, as Naga has this mind-blowing experience, the squad like, yo, my Naga, where you at, family, where you at? They sitting up, running up, they calling for him, like, yo, where you at, cuz? I'm right here. He shows up, he shows up with Yaka Yimba, and she sat up her like, they they sit up here and they and they do the usual thing when when things like this happen. They begging him, no, knock on, please don't do this, my dude. This ain't what you want. This ain't what you want, please. I'm I'm, I'm like, come on, man. I know, man, that that's what you wanted, man. But don't do it this way, man. There's a right way and a wrong way, and I'm like, the right way don't have no shortcuts. It's harder, but it's worth it, man. We need you to listen to us, please, 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 please. No. No. No, no, no. This is my love now. I'm staying with Akimba. I have emotions. I finally have what it was that I'm searching for. And to add insult to the injury, she sits up and follow up like, they don't want you to have this. They jealous of you. I'm like, I'm always going to take care of you, baby. And this is what you want. Yes. I want emotions. I want emotions. I want more of that wet. I want everything. I want it all. He says, he says up her, he pulls out the Q-tama. And it changes to a Q-tama. He said up her, and it's like, the star changer changes. Dark star changer. I am improved now. I'll show you what my emotions will rush upon you. <sighs> Dark happens to Kakutama. <sighs> Dark Kakutama. Ultimate Dark Change. <sighs> oh, yeah. <sighs> This is my true form. Evil snake, metal and moto, have this to get left <laughs> Now, I am the me that I want to be. And you, you're in my way. Come, be destroyed. By me! And that's exactly what he does. Delivers massive veils. Like, this suit is crazy. He set up her. He got the eye to be blinking. They shot a laser beam at him. And then he shot another one at some point. And Hammy almost killed her. But, but Mr. L hit her. Boy, and hit her. And it's like, it cut the tree down. Like, the thing that I appreciate about this fight was, yeah, the changes happened. Naga's been taken over. Akiyama, she's won. She's got exactly what she want. They did a wonderful job, toy or not, putting over that Head BC 2 Kai medal is a threat, a legitimate threat to hold them off, to sit up her like, yo, it was five on one. And two of the five in that fight. Well, what's my name is Birdman and Mr. L. And they took a L. I'm like, who else was in that fight? Let me see. It was Birdman, Mr. L, Hanny, Uncle Stinger, and Sanji Jr., I think. And yeah, I think it was Sanji Jr. I think it was Sanji Jr. that was a part of that fight taking these massive insane elves. I think that was him. Because I'm like I said, no, wait, let me see. Birdman, Mr. L, Uncle Stinger, Cutie Hammy, and who was, who was 
they who was they fifth member? Who was they do? I'm trying to think who was they fifth member. I'm trying to think. Let me see. Cause I'm trying to think. Cause I'm like I really should have wrote this down on my notes. I didn't think that I want. Yeah, it was it was signed DJR. So I was right. Yeah, it was signed DJR. He sits up here and delivers upon them these massive, insane L's. Delivers these L's. I'm like, this was insane. Now, this was the point in the analysis that I wanted to get to because we almost done with the episode. This reminded me a lot of one of the best things that Pretty Guardian Sailor Moon ever did with Dark Mercury. Because while it's while the opening salvo of why those characters exist or are kind or are kind of the same that you can take your inferences from that. One well, actually, when I think about it, depending on how they handle it, it could be pretty much the same. Because Dark Mercury wasn't around to do nothing but to remind Usagi that she is a complete failure to her best friend. That you let this happen to me, I'm like super down with being with being Dark Mercury to being, being this diva. And I will destroy you whenever I feel like it. Because most of those episodes were... I'll be fighting inside herself to fight this, but she sits up her and the way that they portray it, like, I can kill you anytime I want, but I just want you to suffer more. And I kind of have the feeling that what Naga's going to do is be very similar, that this is going to be, he going to be a threat to the Q Rangers, and this going to, and this going to, and this going to flow into the Black to the Future stuff, and all this old nonsense, but this was something that I did not see coming, something that was wonderfully taken care of, wonderfully done. But the other thing that I wanted to get at, because it's the part of the episode where we have to get to it, because the end of the fight, it's like, they sit up her like, I'm done dealing L's today, let's go, babe. And they leave, and then the two dudes, they sit up her, and they take all-star crashes, but then Hammy drops to her knees like, what are we going to tell Balance? So they fast forward and get back on my uncle and they tell balance. And at first, balance like he just he he is sitting up here. He trying to sit up here and straight no sell this like it, it's all right, man. We, we'll bring him back. It's cool. But then he take a second to really reflect on what's going on, and it's like balance is shook, shook in a way that we have never seen this character before, and it's like. I appreciate that because it gives the character a chance to grow because this whole time Balanced have been all about the jokes, all about the jokes being the comic relief, which is what the show needs, even though the show provides it, if that in normal instances when Balanced around, he provides the comic relief. Now that his best friend, his ace, his brother in trouble, we gonna see a new side to Balanced and it's like it's going to be interesting to see what it is they going to do with this character. Because you know Naga is going to gain something from this experience. But the question you really have to ask. Is balance as a character going to change from this experience? Because your best friend, your ace, your brother got what it was he wanted. Yeah, he shortcut it to it, but he got it. But how is it that you're really going to emotionally deal with it? Yeah, Balance is an android. I get that. But he's an android with feelings. So it's like, how is this going to affect him? Because we've seen what psychological nerve damage, and now that's an Eminem joke, but the psychological damage that affects characters in the show. Remember Uncle Stinger when he was fighting Uncle Jesse? Remember that? That was that was psychological. A lot of a lot of those a lot of those jazz and uppercuts to Uncle Stinker. So a lot of those were psychological by his brother. So you already know that this ain't gonna be some one and done. Balance gonna see in the next episode. No, this is gonna be a trick because they need to have they cause the plot gonna be a two pronged attack because that's what happens next. They sit up here like Balance like if Balance by himself say I'm gonna stay and say Naga by myself, but then. Mr. L, Cutie Hammy, Japanese Justin, 
and who else step up with them? And Wolf will step up with them like, yo, we're going to save Naga. And then everybody else like, yo, we're going black to the future. So they sitting up here setting this up like we got a two-plot Pong attack. Like, we finna go back in time to do some reconnaissance to find out why John Matter nigga ain't dead. And in the meanwhile, we gonna save Nana. But it's like, this is not gonna be again, like I said, some one and done magical thing where next time Balance ain't Nana, they not. They gonna, go, they gonna go at each other. And you know, and you know, because Nana is in this weird emotional state, you know he gonna go at Balance. And you know... There are going to be decisions made and things like that. I don't want a repeat of the whole Moo Moo Man sacrificing himself thing just to bring him back because you can do that because he's an android character. I don't want that. I want this to have some emotional impact. And, I, and I'm asking a lot from a show that sells toys to Japanese children. But the plot has been good enough to respect me, my time, and what it is that I think I want from the show. And I really think that trying to bring this full circle and do something that improves balance and not as characters. And then and in that same loop even had me because a lot of this is going to be on her. And you really, and I, and I just got the feeling that you gonna really see a lot of Hammy and a lot of a lot of Balance squatting up because Hammy feels very responsible for what's happening here. And Balance is that that's his ace, that's his that's his ace boom right there. And you know, and you know they gonna have that in the locking up. They gonna have that they gonna have that special Ibo moment when they save him. But it's gonna be interesting to see how they build up to it, even though like the answer is right there. The whole Black to the Future, let's make a music video think that's another thing entirely. And I have no legitimate clue what it is that they trying to do with that, if anything at all. And I don't mean like if anything at all like that, but really trying to legitimately wonder what they can do, what they should do, and why they should do it. So it'll be interesting to like see like where this show go from here because they got a lot going on. And I'm like, and I'm and it's like this episode legitimately got my attention. It got my attention because, yo, I I kind of saw that maybe they were going to do something with Naga, but this was a little bit even more extreme for my imagination. Yo, make him an evil ranger. That's dope. So it'll be interesting to see what they do with this. And, you know, I'll be reporting the news as it comes out. So it is what it is. So... That is another episode of Uchu Sentai Q Ranger Space Number Twenty Six Warrior of Darkness Hebisu Kai Metal, and that's that. Um, I got the XA. I got the XA here for you sometime this weekend. You know what I'm saying? Just waiting for the weekend. Got a clear sight and a clear moment to sit up here and concentrate and get all the notes down because Bill gonna be on any day now, and I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready for something new, but it's gonna be sad to say goodbye. To, it's gonna be sad to say the goodbye to XA. More plenty of work on the channel, man. More work coming, and you know how we do. So I'm going to go ahead, and I'm going to get up out of here. You know who it is. It's the one in the alley, the triple, the G-O-D, a.k.a. the one and the only leader of the synagogue, Pastor L. Please don't forget on your way out to put that money in the building fund so we can keep building on the building with the building fund and again, we'd like to thank you for joining us for another installment of Triple the Guy Speaks Song. And with that being said, come on the change! <laughs>